Um, La, they received it around 12 noon. So mothers who had come earlier were not able to get it. They were told to come either later in the day yeah. or today. That's the next day from yesterday. So oh, okay. that was generally what I saw. It seems that vaccination is going on. But um, there are also concerns that they are not enough. And so we are hoping that there will be more vaccines uh, coming in soon in the next okay. weeks here. I see. Thank you so much Thank for always keeping us updated. Yeah. yeah. I think Thank the concern you. that has been raised by, is it health sector workers or mm. um, entities that work in the health sector, is that it's not going to last long. Exactly. And you know, these are going to be given to a number of children. Yes. And the children will have to be given at least ev uh, every week, mm. you know, because they have itemized days. Mm. And yeah. people uh, um, are being given birth to every day, every day. Or, young, mm. or babies, you know. So, I, I don't know. Um, the thing that we have to ask ourselves is, is it a failure of policy, planning, etc.? Did we take our eyes off the ball? Who should take hmm. the flag for it? Hmm. You know. Judith. Yeah. We have to let you go. Thank you. You look good, really, in that color. Yeah. That, oh, you, thank you. Uh, you said that color is called purple. Eh? Purple. Oh, oh, is this violet? Yeah. <laughs> I think this is violet. This is violet, right? <laughs> yes. Okay, purple is a lighter shade, yeah. I think. Yeah, purple is okay, lighter purple. and brighter. Yeah. Yeah. Purple violet, bye bye. <laughs> Thank you so much, Judith. Thank you too. But I've been worried because I was listening to a health professional on Ghana tonight last yeah, night. Yeah. With Alfred. And exactly. And Alfred asked him a very important question. So for the babies who missed their vaccination during mm. the period they were born, because you need to get the BCG and the OPV vaccines mm, mm. the moment you're born, what happens to them? And the doctor says that they are susceptible to polio. Wow. Mm. And so they have to focus on them and keep an eye on them to make sure that they don't they start don't developing some of those imagine. symptoms. And I was a little worried because, I, I mean, I didn't get the explanation as to whether getting the vaccine a little later could prevent the OPV. Because if you have to take it the moment you're delivered, and you now miss it, and you miss it for a couple of maybe days, weeks, depending on when you were born or months, then that's a major problem. And I to know, and to know that this it. shortage began in the later part, in the last quarter of 2022. Yes. Yes. And we sort of allowed it the beginning of the last exactly. quarter into, into 2023. And the amount of children that have had to go without getting their life-saving vaccines. Yeah. I'm not sure if it, if it was a revenue shortage. Shouldn't we put in place, um, like say, a public health emergency fund like many have been like pushing the way, the Like agenda. the way we had a COVID fund, exactly, for example. Exactly, to ensure that no matter how our revenue shortfalls or care. Mm -hmm. We still always have enough to be able to deal with certain things like this and not take our eye off the ball. Yeah. Yeah. Because it, it's different when you're dealing with adults who can be able to maneuver, but these are babies. Okay. These are young children yeah. that yeah. are our future. And mm. we cannot sacrifice the future of the next generation of Ghanaians hmm. simply because of a mishap on the step of um, the health ministry or the health sector in general. So mm. this is something that is, we need to ensure it's done because if at this point you're saying six weeks is what we have mm -hmm. and we have uh, we have at least six months to catch up on, then what are we going to do to ensure that you, it comes You know, sometimes way? responses to some of these public um, inquisitions or inquiry, um, especially being led by the media yeah. and those who are leading spokespeople, either in the sector or advocates, which tend to be misconstrued to mean that you're being heard of government. Sometimes mm. I don't get it. Mm -hmm. And these are some of the actions that I feel that people in public office really need to take responsibility for. Absolutely. Because we are a member or a key member of the World Health Organization. Yeah. The World Health Organization always insists that because COVID-19 came in, we're likely as a global entity or as the globe to take our eyes off the ball. Mm -hmm. So had always been warning since 2020 yeah. that make sure that you don't take your eyes off the oh, ball exactly. or perhaps you don't um, lose your hands on some of the other related complicated diseases that tend to plague many countries. Mm -hmm. yeah. There are countries that are developed that don't have babies taking some of these vaccines yeah. anymore because it is not a public health emergency. Yeah. Hmm. If you take your eyes off the ball in a developing country like ours, we have open gutters, we have um, um, a lack of health facilities, etc. We have problems that are confronting our health sector. Yeah. It also means that you have failed to do proper planning. Yeah, absolutely. And who should be responsible for it? Exactly. All these excuses that we keep having, for which, as of last week, the health ministry in their interaction with the public. Mm. They tell us that mm. it will come soon, S-O-O-N. In about three weeks, actually. Okay, S-O-O-N, as soon as possible. 
Then we have, well, thank God, Jesus Christ coming in 48 <laughs> hours. It helps. <laughs> now, Okuje to Ablakwa, the North Tom member of parliament, is saying, oh, we had nice. some reprieve from Nigeria, etc. Yeah. Well, if that is true, no then problem. fine. If that is not true, then we have to ask ourselves, what did, what did where did we get the vaccines from? Where exactly. are they coming from? Do we have more? And that could come? is it coming to us? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Look, in this country, we have a health minister who has been pro by parliament, use an intermediary to mm. purchase vaccines which could have been prevented yeah. and Ghana could not have made any loss at all. He had to come to parliament to... Give an excuse. Apologize. Apologize. Like, well, well, basically. Well, well, I also give an excuse, yeah. basically. Uh, yes, and then apologize as well. He gave he gave an excuse that he will, he was not in the he right frame of mind. Right. Mm. COVID was attacking everybody else, in, including him in his office. As a result of that, sometimes you hallucinate, hmm. you know, literally. So so we we are in a in a very dire situation. It, it look, now we are catching up. Yeah. We used to have excess. Now we are catching up. Yeah. And you know, having babies is, is something that that. Is happening all the time. We have a population growth of 2.1%. Mm -hmm. So this year, we expect our population will grow by 2.1%. Per the current population of last year, we expect that 2.1% of that population of last year will be born this yeah, year. Exactly. I mean, so, Charlie, so sometimes some of these excuses that they give, you keep asking yourself, well, so, so what really is the problem? And at this point in time, I, I honestly wish we could have a bit more reward and punishment going on because at this point clearly someone's desk was supposed to oversee this yeah clearly someone's desk failed and over the last few months has consistently failed to get the right amount of doses needed for the children of Ghana to get into Ghana in time we've now had a whole media circus and everyone now agitated about as getting the vaccines here in time. And also, just like you said, gives room for what kind of procurement issues mm -hmm. are hanging around this. Because if we clearly have, have, have had instances where during the COVID, we sort of use um, the guise of COVID to have so many interesting procurement aspects brought onto how we brought in vaccines, what is going on with these ones? How quickly or how, how expensive is it going to be for the Ghanaian taxpayer if we now actually try to probe in how these exactly. actions came in? Yes, it's life-changing and we need it and we need our children to have it, but at what cost to us? And how could it have been prevented if we had just done the right thing at the right time? Exactly. And for me, it was even the fact that it was these same health professionals who started speaking up hmm. after they had had to deal with the situation, you know, under wraps for about three months. They couldn't take it anymore and they had to speak yes. up. And again, like you're saying, who was supposed to do this? And why didn't they do it? And why are heads not rolling? Mm. Because I, I think that it's, it's really a problem when we sit down and allow a situation to fester. We don't find a solution to it. Eventually, we come and make promises to the public that don't worry, we're fixing it, blah, blah, blah. And then the person who was supposed to do the job still sits at his yes. desk or her desk and continues like everything is okay. Someone's head needs to go down. And until we start making those very difficult decisions, that if, you know what, if you don't perform, I'm going to kick you out, mm -hmm. then maybe people will be very comfortable doing what they have to do. And I always go back to a situation in Rwanda, and this is from a top journalist in Rwanda who says that he sat in some of these meetings where every year the president puts you on TV as a minister yes. or as a head of whatever department. They, give, they ask you to give a detailed uh, report of what exactly you've done for the year. And if you fail, they fire you live on TV. Isn't that the way Live to go? on TV. But that is also a high level of accountability, not only to the president, but to the rest yes. of the people who live in the country. So if I'm watching you and I can see that the president is, is cracking the whip or whatever on whoever is doing something wrong, then I have faith in the president. But this time around, he comes to speak and he also catches some flack for the same statement he's made because we know you won't do much mm. about it. This same health minister has been in office even when he openly disclosed that he wasn't thinking straight when he made certain major mistakes mm. <laughs> you know and we're still in the same situation nobody's talking about whose head should roll for this mm. it's not enough to put children under this kind of situation if it's adults we can manage but Do you babies, understand? and the fact that we're likely going to have babies who develop polio because they missed their vaccine date and I mean, how? adding to the gains in which Ghana has made over the last few years, as one of the, the countries on South Africa that's been able to actually manage our polio situation, and we're going to reverse all of mm -hmm. that simply because someone couldn't do their job right at the time that was needed. Why are they it doesn't still make any post? sense. Yeah.
and, and communicable diseases are, are, are things that Africa has uh, been plagued with. It's very much endemic. In some countries, they still have not been able to manage them. In countries uh, which are war torn, I think the excuse is good. Mm. It's war torn, it's unstable. Yeah. The security is bad. You don't have good revenue coming in. You don't have donors um, having the influx of some of these um, facilities or vaccines coming in. So that's, that's a good enough reason to mm. say that if the, we have uh, in the Sudan or elsewhere in the Horn of Africa a number of these diseases c coming up, that's a good excuse. But, but yeah. for us, we, we need proper explanation. Yeah. And w what is the adequate provision that has been made? And yeah. we know that Bella and I, for example, know somebody uh, who told us from a very good source that the president was briefed, mm. that everything was fine. Yeah. Whilst yeah. We know, and, and, and this was at the last quarter of last year. The president was briefed. Everything was fine. Everything was fine. The person was surprised. Yeah. Was, well, and the, the person was surprised that the, the entity that was responsible for telling the president that, look, we need to act mm -hmm. on this quickly. Yeah was telling the president that everything was fine. Whilst we know that within the sector or within the ministry, everything is not fine. Because if people are living in areas which are hard to reach, mm -hmm. um, yesterday, for example, in Ma Makango, Makango is located in East Gonja, mm -hmm. in Savannah region. You have to walk several kilometers to, to access to some it. basic health facility or some basic treatment yeah. as far as healthcare is concerned. And you're looking at babies within those catchment areas who can have access to some of these vaccines. There will be delays in transportation, etc. And then when they are finished, what else do you do? Some will have to travel several kilometers based be on to... whether there's availability of some funding to be able to take transport, etc. So I think that... The, we also have to look at the vulnerable in our society. Yeah. And sometimes when we're doing some of this planning, we do that within the context of how their lives or their yeah, livelihoods their are. Lives. And be able to know that, look, we have to mirror what, the difficulties that they go through. And we live in Accra City, right? Accra mm -hmm. City. Yeah. It's a city now. Uda, Uda. Okay. Cosmopolitan City. Uda, yeah. Uda. So Accra. We live in Accra, Kumasi. So we think everything is fine. Yeah. No, everything is fine. Absolutely. But this is what someone it's has to sit in. To cross to another Makango. community. So, so people will have to cross this river body to get to a community to access health. And, and, and it's the same situation um, that we're relating to how people will have to go through difficulties to access um, voter registration or a, vote, yeah. or a Ghana yeah. card mm -hmm. to go and vote. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not about me living in Nima and having to cross to a district office in Ayawaso, etc. to mm -hmm. go and register. It's about those who don't have the access. Exactly. Yes. It's the vulnerabilities in our society that we have to make considerations for. I have a question, though. So just about two weeks ago, we saw the, um, the EC chair in Parliament mm. giving us details of what they were doing to ensure that there's continuous re registration with the Ghana card only. And she was making a case for it so that the CI could be passed. Now, in that room as well, we heard from... Um, the National, the National Education Authority, Authority Board who said that some monies had been released at that point, but then there still was more that needed to be released. And the finance minister assured them in that room that don't worry, that money is going to be released as mm. soon as possible. Was he aware at that time that we didn't have money to be able to buy um, the vaccines and that the fact that we hadn't procured vaccines? And did we think that at that point it was even more important to release money almost immediately? Mm. For the National Identification Authority to carry on. Of course, it's a very important thing. But at this point, and when the children, lives of children. Exactly. Important. Children require the vaccines and we didn't have them. Do they think that at that point it was prudent for them to release money for that when we didn't have the funds to secure and procure some of these vaccines? Bella, it's a we, question we, that we, they need to answer. It's all putting issues into perspective about what our priorities oh, yes, are of course. and what uh, those priorities, priorities should be at which point in time do we have to take the decision mm -hmm. to make sure that this has to be prioritized. Yeah. Because as far as we're related, over 100 million is owed um, vendors yeah. by the National Identification Authority. Exactly. And there are a number of actions that are also taken um, in relation to whether you have to give money to education or to health or related uh, sectors. And 
So the question about priority also comes in. There and then, the finance minister said, oh, we can oh, quickly uh, put in yeah. um, uh, 65 million mm -hmm. to the vendor and mm -hmm. then try to make sure we offset the ex yeah. ex ex excess ones that we need. It, it, it's about, and the finance minister has a trust problem with the Ghanaian public. Yes. If he doesn't yes. know, we're telling him. Yeah. He has a trust yeah, problem. He does. Because every word he's said since April 2022, mm has not yeah. come to pass. Yeah, he's done yes. the exact opposite. All the people he's been mentioning in the Bible are in the Old Testament. So Jesus didn't come in the Old Testament period. So the manifestations mm. of those things haven't come to pass. Mm. He said, we won't go to the IMF. He said. We will raise our own revenue. Mm. We are proud. Yes. Because we are an independent country. Mm. They've been calling names in the Bible, uh, Tobias and, and all those people, Nehemiah, Nehemiah yeah. and yeah. all those people. All those people who have been reincarnated into <laughs> Ghana, they haven't solved our problem. So he has a trust issue. Mm -hmm. So that's why we keep asking the question, is it, a, is, it, is it a monetary issue? Because there's no way that somebody who is a technocrat at the Ministry of Health is not going to tell the health minister that, look, we need the northern regions of Ghana need vaccines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The southern sectors need vaccines. Mm -hmm. There's no way a technocrat who has we'll worked in the that. ministry all these years, including the related NGOs and, and, and other entities that work in the sector, will not alert the health ministry that we have sh really shortages. shortages. We really have shortages. And honestly, for the uh, health service people to come out and to publicly speak. try and speak about it, really to raise choice. awareness means that their means of um, trying to reach out and convinced the government to have yeah. done the right thing months ago had failed hmm. to the point that they knew that they were being regulated to the sidelines and they needed to raise public awareness to be able to get that but while on it while you mentioned some of the areas that are hard to reach hmm. i also wonder how we're deploying our ghana drone service delivery because if launched in 2019 and powered by zipline we've sort of created this whole um campaign around the fact that it's Allowing hard to reach areas get the needed medical supplies that are mm -hmm. there. Are we truly deploying the drone service to be able to ensure that the vaccine reaches everywhere that it should? And if not, then what is happening to the drone service? In I, 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 I think I, I think so far what we've been told that we haven't found out though is mm. that the drone service uh, is zipline. We call yes, it yes, is, yes. is working so far. The thing yeah. is that there has to be the product. Yes, exactly for, for the to zip line to, <laughs> to transport. <get> <laughs> but that's the thing. So if <laughs> there's no health professional in that community and they have to travel hours, yeah, just across to get the it. next community, even if you you know dispatch the medical supplies, it, it needs to move to another yeah, community, to and they to. still need to cross mm. and get there. So issue so, about access comes exactly. in exactly, mm. and the fact that we have told Ghanaians that there's going to be 111 district hospitals. Hmm. What's happening which, to which, that? Which, which, which one? <laughs> well, well, the person did say. He I didn't know. One, 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 one. He came back and said that, well, that's Last time we went to Labadi. Labadi is well, the la general hospital. Yeah, spot. Please that, don't that, yeah. that promise. No, but, but that's yeah, the, the problem. Like because hospital. if I live in a community, I pay taxes. When it's time for elections, you find a way to get into my community and campaign yeah, yeah. and ensure that I vote. When it's time for elections as well, the materials are able to find their Magically. way into these communities. Mm -hmm. But how come we cannot make sure that they have hospitals, access to education, access to all the other things that the major cities also have? Even the major cities are, are suffering because Kolebu is not even adequately resourced yes. as it stands now. Yes. So we that we're here, we even have to secure a bed before we can call an ambulance. Because yeah. if you call them, they'll ask you, Madam, do you have a bed? How much more someone who lives in such a deprived community, yeah. who has to rely on a canoe? It's not even safe because in most cases, they don't even have a life yes. jacket. So two troubles, one God. I'm sick, I'm dying, and now I have to cross a river, and only God knows if I'll even fall in and drown because I don't have the protective gear for it. Travel to another community to seek health care. What's the guarantee that when I get there, I'll even get the, the health care that I require? Because when it's a very serious situation, they'll have to transfer you to the regional office yeah. and then eventually to the capital if it's a very serious situation. We don't have the facilities. We don't. There's Agenda 111. We don't know what's going on. Hmm. Except for the fact that the president has told us 87 of them are underway. But even when you ask government communicators, oh, we're doing it, we're building <laughs> it. But there's really no tangible evidence for us to see that, well, we've reached maybe 90% for this one in this community. True. La General Hospital, we're still waiting. And the last hmm. time you went, this was what, just a month ago? Yeah. Just a month ago. I think we're less, still less at than ground a level. Ago. Ground level. Oh, today's date. Today's oh. date is what? Yeah, less than a month ago. And, and, and you know, this month, um, is making it three years, three years since since, since that hospital 
was pulled down, down and was, suppo was supposed to have been completed in, in 24 year. months mm. or something like that. Mm. How do you break down a very functional Three years. place? Hmm. Three years old, 2020. They use it, good campaign message. It's, it is nice. We love that. We want to have a hospital. Of course. You know, but the thing is, that, that's why I keep, I keep saying that there's no way people within the health ministry don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. The thing is, do we have a sense of priority, what has to be done, etc. The people of La, for example, and all those places that are, were promised the hospitals or have been promised the hospitals, were expectant or are expectant that within so so and so months, this hospital for which we had a grand ceremony for sword cutting mm -hmm. will be built. Now, then it comes back to the issue of access. Mm -hmm. Because when you don't build it on time, it means that somebody's life is at stake. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and we're told when we went to the community mm -hmm. that people have to go to rich, etc. Even La Polyclinic is choked. Yeah. And even and when you're coming, and sometimes they were told that depending on the, the traffic at the OPD for, or emergency, for example, mm -hmm. they have to look at who is coming from the faraway places, yeah. etc., who is coming from the nearest, mm -hmm. because these hospitals are supposed to serve catchment areas. Yeah. Now you're coming from far away, you have a health facility somewhere, mm. they'll be telling you, you are from La, yeah, please from wait. Yeah, exactly. Or, you know, and, and sometimes it's not cool. When you, mm. when, you, when, when, you, when you talk to people and they tell you how they lost um, relatives yes. or friends yes. because of just a health emergency, yes. mm -hmm. a health emergency for which perhaps if we had taken the right time and made sure we undertook the policy initiatives that we promised the people, yeah. if the facilities were available, could have saved somebody's yeah. life. You keep wondering whether we are safe. Because what, it could be you, it could be it me, it could be, be somebody else. Of us. And that's what scares me a lot because God forbid it's not a public health policy yeah. at all. And at this point, the lack of urgency mm -hmm. that comes from stems from uh those in charge of the health sector is something that worries me yeah. because anybody can have a health emergency Anyone. anywhere and Anyone. and that's the worst part about it no matter how much money you have no matter how much influence you have you would hope that at a point in time you have that health emergency there'll be people around you that can give you that life-saving um means mm -hmm. but then the problem is if you don't invest in the health sector you could have an issue on the road one day and no matter how much money you have yeah. no matter what helicopter or private jet is waiting for you to convey you to a better place of health you would need that first respondent or those those emergency first aid and if you don't have it or you yeah. haven't serviced or provided the access to get that you will die yeah. and it's it can happen to any single one of us well the people in charge they travel out for but you see when you ha when it happens and we've seen many people many out. people who have means who have the power but because they had an emergency on a on a, on a long road somewhere or they did people didn't recognize who they were so they mm. didn't get them the to to the best hospitals mm. in times they have died I know and it's I, happened to I, their I, family I, members there's a there's a prominent man who apparently had asthma. An asthma attack? Uh, yeah, uh -huh. on a Spinter's Road. And, and, and was taken to what, a, a hospital, some new hospital for the road. But talk. the problem mm. is, Big Mano, all the money public. in the world to be able to get himself to, to the UK or the US or wherever it is. But the fact is, if you don't do it for you, eh, it will One come against you. Uh, it will come. Let's go, go to Johnny's Bites. Yeah.